In this video, I'm gonna show how you can easily install beautiful artificial turf just about anywhere, over dirt, concrete, an existing deck, or even a rooftop like we've got up here. So in this video, I'm gonna share everything I've learned, the mistakes I made, and how you can avoid making those same mistakes. Now, in order to give you the most detailed footage and the best explanation, I have set up a mini grass installation down in the workshop. So let's head down there and get to learning. This video is sponsored by Simply Safe. There's no safe like Simply Safe. So we're back down here in the workshop with this mini grass installation setup. And of course, you'll be seeing footage from that massive grass install on the roof. Step one is figuring out what type of substrate you're gonna install over. Artificial turf can be installed over just about anything. You can install it over dirt in your yard, on top of a concrete patio, or in my case, I built a new wooden deck to install the grass over. Once you get a flat substrate though, a lot of these steps are gonna be the same and I will explain differences for different types of install as we go. So in our case here, I've built up a two by four frame with marine grade plywood holes for drainage. So I've seen installations of grass directly over concrete or dirt where you just lay these down, but that can lead to a lot of problems. For a better install that has proper drainage, can deal with pets and so on, you're gonna wanna install some sort of underlayment that allows for air to flow on both sides of the grass and allows water to drain through to the ground. So the system I decided upon is this air drain underlayment along with nailer boards. In my case, it's just one inch composite decking. You're gonna secure these nailer boards down around the edges of the area where you're installing the grass and then lay the air drain in the middle of these as you go. In my case, since I've got a two by four and plywood frame, I was able to screw the composite deck screws down with regular deck screws. So if you're installing over concrete or dirt or just a different substrate, there's a few variations on this. You can get some heavy duty roofing or concrete adhesive or epoxy to attach these boards to a concrete or a roof membrane or whatever you want as long as you use the appropriate type of adhesive. In a yard, you can buy something called landscape boards and you can basically dig a ravine all the way around your install area and just place your nailer boards into the hole in the ground so they extend above the ground by one inch and give you something to nail to that's secured. If you go with that route, you wanna use nailer boards that don't have a slot in it like this composite decking does. Now I didn't do this here, but if you're installing grass outdoors, you need to think about drainage from these nailer boards. So the nice thing about this composite decking board as a nailer board is it's got slots for drainage. So if your slope runs this way, your nailer boards are running this way, you don't really need to do anything to them for drainage. If your drainage slots are perpendicular to the direction of drainage on your substrate, then all you're gonna do is use a router and cut some grooves in here. You could also use a circular saw to just cut grooves. It doesn't have to be pretty. You also want water to pass through these boards. You wanna get a drill and basically just drill a bunch of holes through this, through your substrate before you install them so that water can get through these boards and escape out of the grass. So now that you figure out how to have your nailer boards that you will secure the grass to at the edges, we're gonna to get to the underlayment. We're using a product called Air Drain. I did some research and this one was pretty easy to just order direct online. This product was super easy to install and relatively affordable and also had pretty good customer service. So this is one I'd be pretty comfortable recommending. Now install this, you basically lay the tiles out in the space where you're installing your grass and each tile has a little bit of yellow corner which you conveniently always put in the bottom left corner and then you work from the back left corner across in rows to install it and everything will just click into place super easy. Now one side you're gonna have these tabs, they're gonna fit nicely over one inch composite deck or nailer boards, whatever one inch boards you use and can just be stapled to them. And here I'm using a half inch wide crown stapler to staple them down. I've heard people sometimes use deck screws or something like that to hold them to the nailer board at one edge. I also threw some staples into the plywood board because I could staple into my substrate, although my understanding is that is not actually required. Now I've found it very easy to cut the air grain to shape using an angle grinder with a cutoff disc. I've also heard that people using a plastic cutting blade on a circular saw or table saw. From what I understand, that works fine. You could even just use metal cutting shears or aviation snips, and that will work fine as well. It'll just take you a little longer. So as far as staples go, if you're installing outdoors, the main thing is you're gonna want either hot dip galvanized, not electric galvanized, or stainless steel staples to make sure they can stand up to the moisture outside. I did a ton of research and I found all different kinds of solutions as far as the staples. I found people using narrow crown, 
one inch staples, narrow crown one and a half inch staples. Yes. I found this wide crown stapler with five inch inch wide crown staples on Amazon for, you know, I think I only paid 60 bucks for it. And for larger one or one and a half inch wide crown staples, the staple guns were like $300 and up. So it was a much more economical decision. And honestly, the five inch staples are gonna be plenty. Now it's almost time to install the grass, but there's one important step before you start stapling it down. The grass is typically gonna come in a large roll. In my case, it was a huge 15 foot roll. When you pull the grass out, it's gonna be matted down really flat. Just think of it like a memory foam mattress and you need to bring it up, preferably in the sun, in the environment it's gonna be exposed to, lay it out flat and let it sit there, acclimate, flatten out for a couple hours. So in our case, we hauled all the pieces up to the roof to let it flatten out. So once you've laid out your grass, it's time to start cutting the pieces to rough size. Now, according to the instructions, if this fringe is gonna go up against a wall or a deck or something like that, then you can cut off one row of the grass. Otherwise, if there's gonna be a seam where you cut, they recommend cutting off at least three rows. Now cutting it, there is a right way and a wrong way to do it. And if you do it the wrong way, I learned this the hard way trying to use some shears in the garage, it'll end up slicing through grass blades and it's gonna look awful. You wanna cut it from the back and you wanna use a serrated box knife. Real cheap and easy, but works very well. And then you can just kinda go right in between the rows of grass. It cuts super easy and it'll cut the backing without cutting a bunch of the grass blades. If your area is large enough, you're gonna need multiple sections of grass. You need to do a little planning ahead for where your seams are gonna be. The main consideration is that you can only cut seams in one direction. It's very easy to cut a straight line for a seam between two rows of grass. It leaves it very clean very nice, but cutting the other way, it's difficult to cut a straight line that makes a good seam. So you wanna plan your layout of pieces so that all the pieces are oriented with these rows of grass running in the same direction. Now, when you cut the pieces of grass, you're gonna cut them to rough dimension first. I recommend going at least six inches wider in the directions where you have to cut perpendicular to the rows of grass so you can come back later and clean it up more precisely once everything's stapled down. Now, initially you wanna staple a few inches away from the edge of the nailer board. And you're just gonna start on one side, throw in some staples in, make sure you stretch it nice and taut as you go. And I usually like to dig my staple gun in and find the backing. Try not to pin the blades of grass down. And you're gonna be throwing staples one every you know inch and a half. You don't wanna skimp on the staples. And once you have one side attached, you're gonna come and make sure you stretch the other side out. If you're installing at a large surface, you definitely want to get a second person to help you stretch everything out and avoid air bubbles. Boom. Now we're gonna have a deck here and when you're coming up against an edge where you're gonna be installing against a vertical surface, don't staple it all the way to the edge. Leave yourself at least an inch or two here that's gonna allow you to get in there and cut it to the exact size later. Before we go further, a quick message from this video's amazing sponsor, Simply Safe who's been protecting me and this building for over three years now. I'm a bit of a worrier, especially now that I got techs here, but having Simply Safe's motion sensors, entry sensors, and cameras blanketing this entire building gives me peace of mind. When Tex is up here on the roof alone, Simply Safe's outdoor cameras make it easy for me to check up on him and even talk to him through the camera from my phone if I want to. Hey Tex, hey buddy. Indoors, I've got Simply Safe's new smart alarm camera, which combined with their live guard protection provides cutting edge security features. The smart alarm camera uses AI powered motion detection to intelligently distinguish between pets and potential intruders. And when an alarm is triggered, the smart alarm camera is the only camera that allows for live two way communication from a Simply Safe agent. This is Simply Safe. Police are on their way. And get them out of your home before they do any harm. Simply Safe agents can provide police with the evidence to get you priority emergency dispatch. All this Simply Safe goodness is super easy to set up on your own and it costs less than a dollar a day. Plus, with Simply Safe, there's no long term contract. You can cancel whenever you want. Right now, when you head to simplysafe.com slash industrial and sign up for a Fast Protect plan, you'll get 20% off of your Simply Safe system plus one month free. And when you buy from Simply Safe, who is a longtime supporter of this channel, you're also supporting the channel and techs. So thank you in advance for that. And thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. Now, 
let's get back into it. So next up, I'm gonna show you how to do seams in an artificial turf surface. And I actually made some mistakes up here. If you look closely, you could definitely see a little bit of a seam right here. It's not terrible, I can live with it, but we can do better. So let's head back downstairs so I can show you the mistakes I made and how you can avoid them and do it right. So next up is using the seam tape and it's not as big of a deal as it seems. <laughs> You get the laugh track. Seam tape comes in a variety of sizes. I got eight inch. You wanna cut it to maybe a quarter inch shorter than this length of your seam. And this is a cloth tape, so I find it easiest to just cut it with the same razor as you're using for everything else. Now the seam tape has two separate halves that you peel off, so you're gonna do one at a time. You're gonna to want to position the seam tape so that the backing of the first piece extends just a little bit over. So once you got your seam tape positioned, Fold back the grass, don't move the tape, peel back a little bit of it, and then go ahead and secure that down. And get that in there good. Sometimes you can kind of help pick it up, squeeze it from both sides, and then just continue to work your way down a little bit at a time. Once the seam tape is installed on one side, align it, and what we want to do here, you don't want to press it up too tight. You want to kind of just get it so the gap disappears, and as you're kind of pressing it into place, try not to get the blades of the grass stuck together. So the blades of grass kind of come out in a V shape from each of these little stitches. If you push these pieces right up next to each other, those V shapes will hit each other. The grass from the two sheets will kind of push each other together, and you'll get this unnatural like mini mohawk right down the seam, which you don't want. So you wanna kinda of give just a touch of space so that it looks natural and continuous. Not too much space so that you see the seam, but you want it to just kinda of blend together. Next up, you're gonna take your fingers and you're gonna press all these blades of grass at the edges. Press them back. Get the blades of grass up and out of the way from where you're gonna be putting the second piece of turf in. And it's probably not gonna be perfect, but Doing this is going to greatly improve the quality of the seam. I'll get your second piece of grass and get it aligned first. Just get it in there loosely and then like run your hand over it, mat it down, see how it's going to look. So now hold that in place carefully. Now again, when I'm doing this, I wanna try to keep the blades of grass out of that middle near the tape because they will stick to the tape and if the blades of grass stick there, it's gonna make the seam look a little funky. Press that end in so I get it locked in. And I'm kind of pulling the tape, if I can, underneath here as I go so that I'm not altering the location of the grass. And so I, I really want to avoid getting those blades of grass pushed down in there. After that's in, I'm going to press it down. And that, my friends, is probably the best seam I've ever done as a somewhat beginner here. But look at that. Boom. That is an invisible seam. Seemingly invisible, if you will. Now it's time to trim things, and for trimming it, again, you're gonna to wanna to use this serrated edge box cutter. So starting over on this edge, we're just gonna make a little relief cut that's a little past where we need it. The first cut is the easiest. That's where you have the rows of grass aligned parallel with the edge you're cutting. You're just gonna pick the row that's closest to the edge. So you can see here, this row here actually overhangs the edge, so we're gonna to wanna to cut that off. And I do recommend every six inches or so, fold it back down, check the cut, because there's no guarantees that the edge is gonna be perfectly parallel with the rows of grass blades. So every six inches, just double check, adjust your cut if needed. Next scenario, we have easy access to the edge again, but this time the rows of grass on the underside are running perpendicular to our edge. Just makes it a little trickier to cut. I just like to use these rows of beads as a guide and try to kind of form a line in between those rows, leaving whole ones. And that makes it a little bit easier to cut a straight line here. Third situation you're likely to run into is where your grass is butting against some object that prevents you from having full access, like a deck or a wall or something like that. In this case, you're, it's gonna be a little trickier to figure out where to start your cut. So I like to just kind of jam my fingers in that corner, pull it up, keeping my fingers in place. Then I can keep track of which bead of the grass on the bottom here is touching up against the deck. And because of the way the blades of grass come out in a V shape, I don't want the backing to be right up to the edge. I actually want like a quarter inch or so gap 
between the edge of the deck or the wall, whatever, and the backing of the grass so that the grass can spread out naturally. Otherwise, that V-shape will get pushed and you'll end up with this smushed, unnatural looking edge of grass, which just looks really funny. Again, I'm going perpendicular to the rows of grass, it makes it a little cut, tougher to cut. Try to just go in between those little beads on the grass. Yep, that looks like a pretty good gap that will fill in and look natural. So after you trim all the edges, and you don't want this little bit flipping up here that you left in order to be able to fold it back and cut. So just go around with one last round of staples to get your grass nice and secure. The final but very crucial step is adding infill. And infill is just these little granules that sit down between the blades of grass and weigh it down so that it doesn't turn into a giant magic carpet. There are a bunch of infill options out there. I went with one called Envirofill, not sponsored, but I do like the fact that this one is green so it blends into the grass really well. It's also safe for pets and antimicrobial so that it won't get all stanky if Tex comes up here and does his business. The infill also helps the blades of grass stand up straight and pop back so that over time as you're walking on it, it doesn't get matted down and stays good looking. And to apply it evenly, I just used a linear drop spreader. An important note here, you don't want to use one of those spinny rotary drop spreaders. They just throw the granules everywhere and make it really hard to apply the infill evenly. With this $100 drop spreader here, it made it super easy to apply evenly just basically walking at a normal pace while pushing it. When you're applying this, you want to do between one and a half and two and a half pounds of infill per square foot of grass. If you're in a windy location like the, the more the better, but also check the spec sheet for the artificial turf that you buy because it'll specify the max amount of infill that your grass can handle depending on blade height and other variables. So after you've spread the infill on your grass, some of it'll be sitting on top of the surface and it's not going to be perfectly even. That means you got to work the infill down into the blades of grass. And I've got a tip here because I saw a bunch of videos saying you needed to buy a power broom, which costs about $300 to work your infill into the grass. I found that a $30 push broom did the job really well, very quickly. So I'd recommend saving your money there and just using a push broom to work your infill in. The push broom is also great for just general maintenance, cleaning the grass and brooming out any spots where there's indents or blades of grass has got bent. You can see here there are spots from where my feet have been while I've been sitting. So I just use the push broom, a few directions, and boom, footprints disappear. So now the fun part where we get to see the results. And Cameraman Cam has promised that some of these are new, never before seen, not in the last video. This type of detailed how-to video is a little different than my typical video. So if you did enjoy it, leave a comment and let me know if you'd like me to do more of them. Next up, I'm gonna be building Tex, a crazy doghouse up here on the roof. And we're gonna be adding some really cool features to take the deck and yard to the next level. So make sure you sub and bell for all of that. Much love for taking time out of your busy day to watch this video. I greatly appreciate it. That's it for this time, and I will see you guys next time.